today we're feeding bees syrup in October. Hello, I'm Griffey, so I'm going to Griffith here we talk everything beekeeping farming, countryside living, now we do reviews as well. Now we are in Brechfa, Andy just kitting up. Hello! And the truck is full. We're going to feed a fair few sites today. We're a bit late because we had a bit of work to do this morning on the dreaded emails and computer, but we are out for the day now and the bees are flying really, really well here. So no doubt they're on an ivy flow. So hopefully we won't have to feed them that much today. So these bees, everything we're visiting today, they've only been fed once. So you can see this hive is very, very busy. So is this one. And I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but they're flying up and out. So there's obviously something up there. Brechfa village is up there, so they may be going there into people's gardens, something ornamental maybe. But I suspect it's this. We got ivy honey. Oh, I say ivy. That's ivy. You can see that's in flower and that's budding up. So that will be in flower soon. So I suspect they're on that. Now, feeding in October syrup, it is still warm enough. So don't let anybody tell you to go, uh, it's too late for syrup yet. It's not, okay? So it's, it still goes up to 14, 15, 16, sometimes 17 degrees at the minute. So it's warm enough to feed syrup still. And I always prefer to feed syrup instead of fondant. Fondant for me is uh, what I give the bees once it gets cold. But you know, I'd rather give them syrup. They take that syrup into the frames and the food is on the frame where the bees mm -hmm. prefer it. So that's, that's what I like to do. Now, you don't want to overfeed, but because we're in October now, I'm not that bothered about overfeeding. Overfeeding in August can be a problem, a big problem actually. In September can be a problem, but once we come into October where we are now, the, the winter bees are there, they're already in the hive. So, I mean, if we feed stuff a little bit too much today, within four or five weeks, they would have eaten a bit and they would have created a little bit more room. So I'm not bothered about um, overfeeding. Some people are, uh, this time of year now, it's just not a concern. I'd rather overfeed something than not feed it enough once we come into this month. And we always trickle feed in. So we start feeding it in September and we leave a few weeks in between feeds. But once you come into October now, stuff is not up to weight, we ram them with food. And basically, the way you assess a hive to see if it's heavy is, you just go up to a hive, one hand, and lift. That's either really heavy or it's stuck to the floor. Let me get a bit more strength. Two. Wow, oh, that is heavy. That is heavy. So that's how heavy that was. I was struggling to lift it. Now, basically, people say, oh, how heavy should the hive be? How heavy should the hive be? It needs to be heavy. And I mean, like a bag of cement. You know, almost like it's like an old time used to tell me, you want the hive to feel like it's nailed to the floor. Now, that one I'm lifting a little bit up easier. So we'll feed that hive a bit more. And always remember, take the bricks off when you're hefting. So that's my tip on feeding this month. Get them as heavy, like a bag of cement kind of weight. So that weighs about 25 kilos. So by the time you're talking uh, within the hive, you've got, we want 15, at least 15 kilos of stores and whatever the hive, the roof, everything weighs. So, you know, if the whole thing roughly weighs 25, 30 kilos, um, you know, I'm happy with that. But basically, if you're struggling to lift it up with one hand, pum, she's there. And, uh, you know, we can still put a, a kilo of fondant on these later on, and that'll give be a visual indicator uh, of what the, the store level is inside the hive, because the bees will only eat the fondant if they need it. So as a beekeeper, you can put a, f a block of fondant on the hive, 
and that is a fuel gauge essentially. If they don't touch the fondant, then you know they don't need any more. If they're eating the fondant, you know we gotta keep on top of it and feed them accordingly. All right, Andy is getting round here and uh, heft and feed these. I think the majority may not even need a feed. Um, but if there, if there is a question mark, we always feed them. Rather overfeed at this time of year than not uh, give enough feed. That's the key message of this video uh, this month. Right, we are on site number two. We'll uh, have a quick half now, and if you have a couple of hives, just for uh, let's get an idea of um, what these are looking like. Bit light, not quite where we want it to be. Not not light light, but it does need at least another feed there. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, let's. Let's have a lift of this one. Oh, that one's that one's okay. That one's better. Because uh, where we are here now, we're along the Towie Valley. Uh, we'll throw some cool drone footage in of the Towie Valley. And, uh, you know, there's balsam everywhere. Just like where we were in Brechfad, there's balsam everywhere. Ivy's out. Andy saw they were working the balsam cell, Andy, weren't they? Still working the balsam down in Brechfad. Which is good, so we'll probably bring in uh, nectar in then. So I'll be the same here. Yeah, there you go, Andy. We'll get some syrup and uh, get these fed down. Last feeds, I think. We won't need a third feed at all. Well, that's another site fed. Bees looking pretty good there. Tell you what, they are pretty nasty uh, today. I don't know what it is, but um, across all sites, they're pretty aggressive. What is the temperature? It is, I think it's 14. 14 degrees, and uh, they're not pleased to see us one bit, but uh, we are doing it without smoke. But overall, probably 95% now, this second feed, everything's yeah. going to be right. Yeah, pretty There's much. There's only, only a small handful, which I feel, which is more light than what it should be. But they've obviously been brewed in, etc. And uh, they need a, f a third feed, and then that will be it. So just to recap, like, feed-wise, we're giving six litres of feed every feed. So a bare minimum, you'll be giving your bees six litres of feed. The average will probably be 12 litres of feed, and then probably 5-10% of the light ones, they'll get another 6 litres on top of that again. So that, that gives you a rough idea of what kind of volume of feed uh, we're giving. And it's actually, just, we're feeding 2 to 1 syrup now, or the equivalent would be uh, invert bee, or you know, uh, a ready-made bee feed. So we're not talking 1 to 1 light syrup now, we're on a thick, heavy syrup. Okay, what are we on? Third or fourth site? Fourth, I think. Site of the day. So we're in Kumguili. Now I can't get any drone content here because I forgot my cable for the controller. So I've only been able to do dro drone footage off uh, using my mobile phone to fly the drone. And it's not as good, unfortunately. But we're getting the content uh, for you guys. We're trying our best to make it a bit more interesting and a bit better. So hopefully the drone, you quite like the drone dynamic uh, to the video. I can't promise drone content every time, but where we can, we will definitely use it. What we have noticed with the drone is, the bees hate it, but they're in a foul mood today. Um, probably worse, I've seen them all year, to be honest with you. So there we go, but look, bees are working. Just saw some yellow pollen coming in. Oh, there's more. 
Ooh. And if you can smell that, I can smell ivy. That, that, this actually reeks of it. Oh, that's up to eight too. Well, almost, almost. If it's almost up to eight, it gets six more litres. Because that's the message. If you're not sure in October, give it another feed. Overfeeding now isn't really uh, an issue. It's more of an issue in August and September where you don't want to block the nests up then because you limit how many winter bees uh, can get created. All right, we're going to feed this site and hopefully get one more site in uh, before the end of the day. When I said these bees are not happy to see us. <laughs> All right. It sounds, inside the suit, it sounds like rain on a tent when you're inside. Constantly just peppering me in the back. Not getting stung, thankfully, but they are absolutely going for us. And that's just how it is this time of year. Let me know in the comments. Are your bees pretty nasty? Are you finding they're nasty now where before they weren't? Let me know, because we're definitely finding that at the minute. But I, I find that every year, once you take the honey off and the bees start gearing down the winter, they don't want anybody messing around with them and uh, they're just being a little bit defensive because of that. And I suppose they go aggressive because of that is, because if anything that would have happened to the queen now, then the entire hive would just die out. So they're a lot more on alert, I'd probably say, is the, the word for it. They're much more on alert and the stakes are much, much higher for the bees at this time of year. And you see that aggression coming through. Just a survival instinct. Uh, we're down on the last site, unfortunately. No track. So they're pumping slurry on this farm, so we didn't have the track. So we've, well, this field, and then there's a big field in the back. We just walked that in two drums each. So what was that? 30 kilos farmer's walk. And uh, bees looking good. They're up, this is a double box. These bees are working the balsam pretty heavily. You know, did you see that drone? That drone being kicked out. That tells you season is up, drones being kicked out. And the bees taking down set up. This hive or this site, and if you look is there, this site is a lot nicer. Uh, these are basically all uh, recent nukes that I made over the last two years, so they're, they're basically pure buckfast. And um, they're not as aggressive as the older Welsh black bees uh, which we've got. So nice easy job here. Yeah. Hardest bit was done carrying the setup down here. Yeah. Um, well, that's what I want to say. These these are all bucket feeders. So you see Andy giving that bucket a squeeze, then turning it into round. So then there's no drips. More feeders on the cards for next year, so we don't have to feed with buckets. So what I'm doing here, this has already been taken down. This syrup, so we're going to be just refilling it. So just take it off. The bees have replaced that down nicely. Look at them there. They're going to be waiting for some more syrup. A lovely temp temperament there. Notice they're just sticking around, doing what they're doing. They don't care about us at all. Just gonna pop this lid off and we're gonna fill it up. This is a syrup I made the other day. Two to one syrup, about 100 litres of water, 200 kilos of sugar, and then about 750 mils of Hive Alive. The thigh ball in it is gonna stop this fermenting and we'll also just have some trace elements and minerals in that hive alive too to help those bees out. What we do, just firmly secure that lid. Give it a squeeze, get that air out. And then that's it there. Lid on, brick on, done. And that's it, shift finished. It is, oh, quarter past three. Pretty easy going on here. Yeah. Apart from the last, last site. Last site, yeah. Eventful day overall. Yeah, but the last site we didn't have many hives there, so carrying two drums each weren't too bad. We've got, I don't know how many of this is empty now. Uh, mixer. So we're gonna take the empties out, make sure we're full for next week, 
and uh, get back on to feed in next week as well. So hopefully uh, we've given you a little bit of insight into feeding syrup uh, this late in the year. Well, I don't even think it's that late in the year. It's quite normal for us to feed syrup this time of year, but I see lots of comments on social media, people saying it's too late for syrup, uh, when in fact it's not. Well, that's it from me and Andy. See you in the next video. See you next time.